Hi, hello. I come to you from my garden, from the yard, and kind of just wanted to check in and say hello and let you know what's been what's been going on with me. Um, I got a new job, so I got a little busy. My kids went back to school, so I went from being a homeschool, work from home mom. So I was always home and YouTube actually saved me from going crazy. Um, to a part-time working kids are at school mom. So now I go to work part-time every day and I also teach my classes online in the morning. I have this beautiful window before the kids get home and I don't know if you are like this, but even though it's three whole hours, I can't figure out what to do. I need to do the chores, I want to get in the garden, I probably should make a YouTube video. So I've kind of been putting YouTube stuff on the back burner. Um, I have a friend who's really sick, um, and that's kind of really personal, but it's been really sad around here, but trying to stay positive and so I haven't been feeling it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, you feel guilty for doing fun things and you wish you could do something. So that's kind of where I'm at. And let me make sure this is on. <laughs> and my battery is also low. So I was coming out here to check on the garden and it's been a week and a half since I planted this. And some stuff came up, some stuff looking like it'll do great, but I think I'm going to put some more seeds in. So if my battery lasts long enough, I will show you where I'm going to reseed and how everything is growing out there. So come along with me. And my four dogs are right here waiting for me. I really want to get a fence to put around this now that it's, you know, it's a fairly big space. And yeah, I just can't wait to get in that garden. So come with me and thanks for watching. I can't wait for this to be all green. It's rough to look at it this way. <laughs> but I know that there's happy soil beneath. So I'm gonna charge my battery and then we're gonna go check on the, check on the seeds that are growing. Seedlings. Okay, so here's my bag of seeds. Yes, they're just in a bag. I keep them in the cool and dark. Um, so what should we start with? I wanted to just go ahead and... Okay, let's go ahead and just throw in some new cilantro. This is some that I saved from my own plant, so that'll be cool. Okay, so right off the bat, um, I planted here. Remember, I cut some holes. And it's just ugly. I don't like how it looks. And it hasn't been successful. Everything else has sprouted, but this, that is a volunteer, some kind of squash. But every other spot is empty. Um, except I think I see something here. But it looks like a tomato, and that would be a volunteer because I planted cabbage here. So not really happy with the little keyhole. Now where to put the cilantro? Hmm. Okay, so this is the space right near my front door. Um, and I'm gonna put the cilantro here because I do come, I wanna just be able to come out and grab it. And it's cold in the winter time, so you wanna put it as close as possible so you'll actually come and get it. Okay, so here's my little square, and my camera went off, but I was giving a shout out to lovely Linda, the New Orleans gardener. She's awesome. Check her out. I'll leave her channel below, but I'm sure if, you, if you're watching me, you're probably watching her, but if not, you're welcome. So, here's some cilantro. 
and I'm just gonna I'm really just gonna scatter it's not really a science here and then I'm gonna just kind of tap it in and and then I'm gonna shake the dirt up again a little and pat it again if I see them I might just kind of poke them down a little bit throw them and go that's it cilantro done I probably should plant more but I really don't need much more than that little space so there it is let's go see what's next Okay, so in this little baby row here, I have my collards popping up. There's one, two, three, four, five, five collard greens. But I just decided that I eat more kale than I do collard greens. So, and I mean, my husband will eat them, but not that often. So I'm going to go ahead and drop some kale here. This is a blue curled scottish scotch go. and as for this that ugliness in the middle i'm probably just gonna take it up and plant again I don't know. And the next row down there is broccoli. So let's go down to the broccoli. Okay. Dropping the beets. Let's start with the colorful beets. Let's see. There's a broccoli here and there's a broccoli here. Oh, and there's broccoli here. So I'm going to put some beets over here. And they can just grow up with the broccoli. So typically, they say like the bigger the seed, the deeper it's got to go. So I might just poke a little hole right there, drop one in. And beets come out with multiple seedlings, so you're going to get more than one anyway. And shout out to my friends over at Gemini Homestead. They're just right, you know, right up the road, not really, but like an hour away from us. And they were talking about how they love beets and they'd have to grow a whole acre just to grow enough beets for them. So I'm going to get them to tell me what they do with their beets because I just eat mine in smoothies. So I could use some ideas of what else to do. See, there's a little nice little row of broccoli right here and then a potato. Some more broccoli. Broccoli here. So I'm going to put, put some beets in here. Should I title this video, Dropping Beets in the Garden? I think I should. Got another broccoli here. So I'm gonna put some beets right here in the middle where there's nothing right here. I love putting beets in my smoothie. Some of my broccoli is really thick and I'm going to need to thin that out a little bit. Drop in beets. Oh, this is a lot of beets. I guess I should stop. I'm really happy about these turnips. They're all popping up really well and I think I'm going to put some beets in the middle of the turnips. So let me show you the, how the turnips look. All right, so here are the turnips. They're pretty bunched up, but they'll be fine. I can thin them. We had a really strong rain after a long time of no rain. So we did see some flooding through here in the garden, but most everything I plant is pretty hardy. There's that tomato, and look at this strawberry. It's just trying trying to run some more. All these strawberries that we moved are doing so good. 
and that's encouraging because my strawberry bed gets full and the strawberries can't get sun and so I think I'll do a better harvest if I extend and you know who doesn't want more strawberries anyway oops I'm standing in the radishes okay so here's the radishes and a butterfly um, we've got radishes down there one two three little rows so I'll probably throw some beets right in here so let's do that you always want to remember to keep yourself a path so my path is kind of through here so I'm gonna go ahead and just no tools gardening it's all mine Oh, there's a worm! Hey, worm! It's been a while since I've seen the worms. It's been so hot. All right, so I've got a little row. This is the last of these bull's blood beets. They've lasted. I bought this probably three years ago. Let's see. Packed for 2017. Yep. So these seeds, I've used Baker Creek seeds for years um, since I've been growing, so like six years. Um, so these are two years old and they're fine. Um, and they just grow so wonderfully for me. So I just never bought anything else. Plus I know that they're heirloom. I like their company. I like what they stand for. I actually used to live right near Petaluma. I lived in Santa Rosa, California. But I never, I wasn't gardening then. Um, no, those were college days. So I wasn't thinking about growing food. So there we go. I'm going to put some where there's gaps too. Got some gaps from the rain washing the seeds away. I guess I do have some seeds left and I'm gonna hang on to them. Here comes that worm. So I was just trying to take a minute and wanted to thank you for watching because sometimes I think, well, maybe I shouldn't film this. Who cares, right? Nobody really cares. Um, and I don't want YouTube to become something of vanity, you know, or look at me, what I'm doing. I do this right. I'm just doing what I'm doing. And I'm going to find out what works and what doesn't. And um, you guys know I'll share with you what works. And so I just want to thank you for following along. And I have some wonderful people who just always say positive things and encourage me to keep growing. And it really does nourish my soul to to grow and I guess it was about a year ago um, all of you guys probably know Jess from Roots and Ref Refuge Farm um, she just encouraged me so much because she, she had some videos that were just like what what makes your heart happy you know not what are you good at not what are you trained for but what makes you what brings you joy try to do that and of course, you know, I just, she's never gonna watch this, but way back then she did subscribe to me, so there's a chance. I'm saying there's a chance, but I hope that you find people who inspire you to be your best. And I just thank you guys for your videos about what you're doing because nobody's perfect, and sometimes it takes some effort to share, to get out here and tape it instead of just doing it. Um, but once I get out here, I really do find a lot of peace and a lot of calm and all that good stuff. And I just saw some baby tomatoes on this on this tomato plant right here. So let me show you. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can see them. This tripod's throwing me off. I'm not used to having a tripod, but there it is. There's the little, they're the little grape tomatoes and it's, they're coming. So we might just get some. Okay, let's see what else is in here. My kids are going to be home any minute. And I love them to pieces, but I really love to be in the garden by myself. So, um, let's see, what else am I going to plant? No more collards. More spinach. Let's go do some spinach. 
I see some popping up, but I'm going to add some more. Okay, so here we are at the spinach. Um, there are two there. And then one. Let me focus. I'll show you how similar spinach looks to grass. So this one is grass, it's got the third one coming out. That's grass. This one's a spinach. So you gotta be really careful. If you don't know, don't weed right away until you can see and it's starting to get its true leaves. You'll be able to see that that's your spinach. But it, it actually is sprouting fairly well. As I go down here, this one kinda got washed out. It might be okay. There's one. There's one. You can, and if I back up, you can see where the water went. Because <laughs> we had a really good rain. I usually kind of build up my rows in case of that, but I just didn't this year. I just threw down. So this one got covered. Look at that. But it'll be okay. We'll just let it ride. See, here's a grass that is not spinach. That's grass. But right next door, there's a spinach. So... You learn to recognize what your seedlings look like. I'm going to go ahead and put some more spinach down here. All right. So yeah, this is my first time actually growing spinach, but we eat so much spinach. So this is a Bloomsdale long standing, uh, better in hot weather than most, glossy deep green delicious leaves. My husband will eat spinach. I love it. So, and we pay like $6 for that tub of spinach, so all the more reason to grow. So I'm just going to come in here. There's nothing. There's one right there, and there's one right there. I'm going to be real careful, and I'm just going to pop one in wherever I don't see one. Pop. And hopefully it'll, it'll grow kind of thick. So I'm just going like maybe a quarter inch down, if that. Some more here. And maybe just like, you know, one next door to the other one. Put one right here. I just found a heart-shaped little tiny stone. I got some holes here. I don't know if I have moles or those mole crab things that Miss Linda was talking about. I don't know. Here's a spinach. Whoops. Alright, so I'm going to put one here. Oh, there's the school bus. School's out for Tuesday. So let's talk about peas. Um, the peas are coming up. There's one. This one over here is kind of hiding in the clover. Two. Three. My kids are fussing already. Four. There's one here. I gotta pull some weeds back. Five. So one of the peas came up, and I cannot remember which ones I planted along here because I planted two types of peas. So I'm going to go ahead and just seed some more of these sugar ants along this fence over here. So I just think it's so interesting. You can see how the rain came through and this is all cut grass that you see here. But you can see that the water was just rushing this way, which is right next to my garden, which is great because it means that, let me back up here, you can see some right next to the garden. So the the water's coming towards the garden, which is good. All right, let's get some peas down. Winter. Sweet home Louisiana. Lord, I'm coming home to you. Here I come. 
So I went ahead and just opened this up. This is where I tried to keyhole the cardboard. I just moved it to the side, opened up this whole bed. Um, there was still some composty, you know, corn and chop and drop stuff. Kind of just scooted that to the side. Um, I used a little rake to gently do that and I left that, um, that volunteer squash just because I don't have the heart to take it out. And so now I'm going to put the cabbage down again. I'm going to go um, red and green because my bristles go red and green. So that'll help me remember. Although I'll see it as soon as it makes color. But here we go. I'm going to go put in some cabbage.